Is light pumping idiot proof? Is it really this easy? No space warping? No time bending? None of that stuff? Is it really just quote unquote buoyancy enhanced? Stay tuned and find out next. Okay folks, now we're finding out again. Let's just make sure this thing is running. Yes it is. Alrighty then, where are we? Today we're going to talk about this light pumping, the quick version. It's just another one of these memes I made. To try to simplify it, uh, you know, down to the point of no-brainer, idiot-proof. And why would I do such a thing? Why not? Well, this guy asked me, this guy on Twitter, Maestro. You know, I was thinking about this, I need to do this. Just put it in such logical terms that anyone can figure this out without knowing anything about light, photon, science, propulsion, anything at all. I mean, how lowest common denominator can I possibly get with this thing? Now, let's see. Uh, yes, he asked me. This is compelling, etc. You know, I'm tweeting my usual propaganda. And I tweet out this thing. You've all seen this. Many of you have. And it, it gives a, a 10 steps on what is a Tic Tac. How might it work? My theory on it. Light pumping propulsion. Which some of you know what that is. Most of you by now. If you're here and care about this nonsense. Um, so my, Maestro uh, asked me. This is compelling. Or he comments. But even with the university level science knowledge. I can't begin to verify if any of this is rooted in logic. Good point. Uh, or is, uh, maybe pieces of it make sense, but overall, give me the big picture. Does it make sense? Not a dig at you, thank you, but you can dig. Uh, simply saying, most can't follow. Can you demonstrate somehow? Well, I talked about the archetypes uh, in the last uh, video. And of course, yes, we can make a prototype. We can make, take a graphene, take graphene, make graphene, and fool around with it, or probably on Apex sometime. Uh, that was covered on another video. I'm seeking truth and rationalism in capital letters. Now he's saying, he hits me with that right when I'm like trying to conceive of something. So he pushed me over the edge. It's like, okay, how could I go back to the ancient Greeks and be rational with them uh, and, and actually it, they knew some of this 
I'm trying to find that I find a certain quote from probably Plato or Aristotle, one of them, talking about basically energy levels and phases. But, uh, so this guy pushed me over the edge, and I'm like, I, I typed this thing, I did this very quickly, um, and I think it's okay. Uh, so, let's go over it, I'll read it to myself and agree with myself, and add to it. Hopefully it'll be rationalism for everybody. Light pumping, the quick version. Basic bulletproof logic for the, quote, beyond next generation, unquote, propulsion, now. Uh, that's a buzzword we were hearing uh, last summer a lot, a buzz phrase, which is good. It's not an iteration. It's a jump ahead. It actually is an iteration, but it's a lot of little ones. Uh, quickly and efficiently. Same thing we're already doing, only scaled. Uh, so it looks like beyond next generation. And, and we'll, you'll, we'll find out why people make comments about this was predictable. Of course, that was me, but um, that's what we're trying to do here. Goal and purpose. Oh, this is as if, as if I didn't stumble on it. Now, it wasn't random, but it wasn't as well thought out as this thing is. Uh, this is like, well, if you knew then what you knew now, how would you attack this problem? Instead of, you know, this is what this is looking back in hindsight, sort of, on uh, why does this make sense? Anyway, let's pretend we're starting with a blank sheet of paper and Play-Doh here on the uh, cave wall. And our goal and purpose, we want to copy these uh, UFOs. And, uh, or even if they don't exist and we're seeing things, we want to up our game with technology. So how would we cause mass to elude gravity, mitigate inertia, and approach the speed of light, a.k.a. big, big ironic air quotes, anti-gravity? Well, uh, we'd come up with a method. Yeah, that's it. All of a sudden, we'd exploit a novel insight by attaching mass to light itself, which already has those abilities, instead of attempting to change mass into what it is not. That's your rationalism, I think, boiled down. We're going to copy. We want to do something, do what they do. Uh, you know, if you can't do it completely, you glom on to the what you can and ride it out. So if we can't be light, we're going to ride on it. That's basically what, what it gets down to. Call it shameless mimicry, shortcuts, or cheating. Better yet, foolproof. Hence the sunglasses, the thug life sunglasses on Plato there. And our insight is we're going to do it backwards. We're going to do it inside out. We're not going to force mass to, you know, geez, let's make this 47 foot, two ton gizmo act like light. Well, how about we just copy light, make our, you know, Get on the coattails. That's what that's what we're doing here. Uh, so we we use that insight, and again, I didn't think of it that way, but I realized down the road that's what that's how that's what it was. Uh, in hindsight, in reverse reverse logic. Oh yeah, dumb it down, make it easy, make it so rational that it's undeniable. So we're going to use that insight. To cause mass to ride on light. Oh yeah. Use it to ca cause mass to ride in light. Yeah. Cause mass to ride through light. Instead of trying to change something into what it's not. You just get on the bandwagon. Copy. Copy nature. Mimic it. That's all we do anyway. You know. With everything anyway. Whether we like to believe it or not. Uh, that's a, that's another uh, video down the road. So we're going to cause mass to adopt every possible characteristic of light we can deterministically control. Hey, you know, we got caveman tools, sticks, stones, screwdrivers. Let's see if we can make a thing, do what we want to do it, do, by cheating. Well, we're not cheating, but we're... we're 
doing it the idiot-proof way. Okay, physically, how? Well, we look to nature. We look back at the early universe before there was mass, and then there was mass, then it moved. How did it move? Same way it's still moving. Um, with the help of light, stored light, or pumped light, one or the other, that's, that's, that's your bottom line, that's your rationality, that's your idiot-proofness. Thumb down, so even I could figure it out in hindsight, in reverse, and pretend I knew it all along. So we're going to start with practical steps by following the example of our fellow mass hydrogen. That was a good insight I had, I think. I'm looking at it, it's like, what's the most basic, you know, thin line between light and mass? Well, it's hydrogen. Um, if you had a basic physics course, you know that. It doesn't have a, a neutron to blow out, and it's very clean and safe, and light goes through there, and all kinds of... That's why snow's so blindingly white outside of the hydrogens attached etc and so forth same with a cloud that's a cloud on the ground anyway so uh, we're going to observe that in arch archetype in nature all right i just mentioned two of them that's fine and uh we're going to copy hydrogen we can't be hydrogen but we can copy it we can capture it we can manipulate it we can deterministically control it. Let's do it. Because we did it with hydrogen balloons, hydrogen blimps, etc. Now we're going to take those blimps, take out every atom, one by one. That was the last uh, uh, video. And we're going to put it on the skin, atom by atom. Our thing's going to be completely covered with those hydrogens. And we're going to control them. We're going to aim them. This one's on, this one's off. This one's going that way, this one goes this way, etc. And we can see it has see this stuff happening in clouds only it's random a cloud uh, follows the sun as the snow you know the sun's controlling all that phase and whether or not it's on the ground like snow or up in the air like a cloud it's still the same heavier than air water molecule appropriate those principles stay focused on the goal light pumping Absorbing and emitting photons to create light bubbles around mass. This is a pep talk also I gave myself last summer. Like, what did, how, what should I do next? Uh, to move like light, be like light. Be the ball, Danny. Corny, boomer joke. You can't be a ball, but you can copy it. So that's what we're doing here. And we are going to optimize masses underestimated malleable light pumping properties, e.g. buoyancy, for example. That means that lawyers use that all the time. I can say that. It's shorter than typing that, for example. Dig deeper than rote cliches because, you know, I, I understand buoyancy is going to be the first response to a lot of this stuff because we all learned it that way. That's what it is. Don't ask further questions. And it's embarrassing to think about how we all, including myself for a long time, just take it for granted. Okay, that's the answer. That's how, how we learned it. But why do we learn it that way? That's what you have to do. Dig in. If, if you don't have an answer you like, dig in. Choose strategies to make the insight visceral and Physically meaningful. Okay, this is me trying to do what I'm doing now, I guess. Focus on embedding hydrogen using optomechanics and metamaterials to begin. Well, we're at the point now where this stuff is coming uh, more and more developed and coming to fruition, etc. and so forth. And um, so it can be done. Identify carbon structures, graphene, graphene, vanta black as initial candidates for nuts and bolts. So you start putting it into a way that people can understand it. And I can understand it. Because how do you capture hydrogen? It's a gas, you know. It's, and you keep digging around, you'll find it. 
uh, carbon, uh, carbon catches it very well, and then you realize, oh yeah, carbohydrates, hey, right. fossil fuels, what do we do, we eat those, burn those, the ba- you know, it, it's a basic thing, okay, let's use the basic thing even more, and uh, there you have it, staring right at you, of course, you know, I was looking around like silicon, will that hold it, and, you know, other things, and they might, it might, who knows, there are other, you, uh, you can use helium and something or other gases. It depends on what, where, why, and how. Have an eye toward pure waveguides and simpler models toward the ultra. Yeah, well, this is where you start. Then you move on to, uh, you know, maybe your bismuth magnesium that people talk about, uh, the crashed metamaterials, if that exists. And I tend to b- believe uh, the, these those stories, and uh, you know, you get down toward the ultra. If you, yeah, it's entirely conceivable that you could make isotopes. They already do it, but how how ultra could they get? I mean, in, in other words, you don't have to absorb. Well, I guess you're still absorbing, but you're moving it more efficiently. You're just pushing it through wheels and wheels, pushing it through guiding it through rather than absorbing going around an electron that's going to take you some time so down the road you're going to want to do that and i keep an eye on that and what to do but this is the best way to explain it i think and get it off the ground ha <laughs> um at first here so what where are we watch as things become even more obvious so it's it seems you know I think it's going to catch on. I'm, you know, I have my confirmation bias. If anything happens, it looks like something I like. I like it, and you know, that's that's human nature. Um, watch daily developments in opto mechanics. So keep up with it. I mean, I had to teach all myself this. That's a long story. Um, being in you know your fifties and going back and buying uh, photonics books. Those weren't even written when I was in school. So, and learning about metamaterials, I mean, it's all on the web. There are books. Oh, I forgot my book. It's a good prop. It's a would be a good prop. Um, uh, I'm reading it now. It's just written this year. They're just writing these books now. These people are just working on this stuff now. But if you can see the bottom line of the big picture, you can. You need. You know. You'll know. You'll need to have these things and now we're getting them simplify what is ultimately a no-brainer okay (laughs) i'm trying clarify both nuts and bolts and logical arguments so that's what i'm trying to do here say uh just just say if you want to be something copy it watch it copy it to the extent you can and uh everybody knows that and that's what we're trying to do here. Copy a thing like light, because we know light is barely affected by gravity, barely affected by inertia. It's fast, and that's what we want to do. So let's do that. Don't be ashamed to, <laughs> you know, at some point it seems, seems dumb, it's so easy, but and try to explain it to somebody and see how dumb it is. But, but um, again, the optomechanics, that stuff, it, it's, all, it's already there. It's, it's written into nature. So ultimately, it's going to happen. You can quote me on that. Now, you might be able to transcend it with warp drives and all that stuff. Fine, do it. But in the meantime... This is, I argue, idiot proof. And the last couple of lines here, that's just me cheerleading myself and etc. So we don't need that. So there's your answer, Maestro. Uh, yeah, Plato answered it. You know, he was before this guy. This is my favorite philosopher, the most rational. And even he knew to copy Plato on these things. So, you know, of course he did. 
Well, we don't have to uh, get into that now. Rationalism. I get, there's some rationalism, folks. What could go wrong? Well, nothing can go wrong, but uh, nothing. So that has to do with this, this, and this stuff. That, oops. That talked about in the last video. One looks like this. Another one has, a, I think, something like this on the front. And we talk about this in more granularity, more uh, uh, technically speaking. And that's what this is. Technical, but hopefully accessible. And I don't understand it much deeper than, uh, than I'm putting on here, you know. Some of that, that high-tech stuff I learned, uh, you know, I've... You know, use it every day. It falls out of your brain. Now, what's this? The role of okay, aerospace this is companies here because... as holders of potentially basic scientific knowledge not shared you with the academic world. You should be able to hear world. it and claim your fair to use on this. Long because we want to promote this guy anyway. It is true. You believe it's this true. This is a new I'm film understand. coming out. You know that there's physics knowledge interview. held by aerospace and companies that is good. not There known. certainly is so material we'll knowledge, run. which involves topological physics. Eric and I had a pretty trippy conversation with the guy that briefs all of the presidents on UFOs, a guy named Hal Putoff. For I interrupted there, so I'm going to run it again and say nothing. The role of aerospace companies as holders of potentially basic scientific knowledge not shared with the academic world it seems very wrong to me. Maybe wrong, but it's um, true. It is true. You believe it's true. Yeah, I know it's true. You know that there's physics knowledge held by aerospace companies that is not there known. There certainly is materials knowledge, materials which science. involves topological physics. Eric and I had a pretty trippy conversation with the guy that briefs all of the presidents on UFOs, a guy named Hal Putoff. For more Good, looking forward to it. And uh, this is a recent, uh, this was just today, a, a Twitter thread about how you know, you make a technological move. This is Lou Elizondo saying this from, say, internal combustion to electric cars and such. Okay, that's what this is. This is a, a big move forward back to the balloon, just like the electric car was around 100 years ago or whatever, but I know what you're saying. So let's do it. Well, let's try it. And this guy here, this is the same filmmaker, the same interviewer, and he's interviewing a deep prasad about reverse engineering with uh, quantum computing. And, you know, I sounds good. Give it a shot. But I got to wonder, can artificial intelligence be trusted? I don't know. Yeah, you're getting to philosophical here, which is fine. Uh... I believe in the human brain over and the intuition, etc., over this stuff. Uh, not just because it's just a coincidence that that's what I'm trying to do here, but I believe it generally in any problem. But, you know, here we go. You know, how about regular? So I'm thinking quantum computing. That's, you know, that's, that's ahead of us in time. What about right now? High performance computing. Google that. Search it. Don't Google it. Um, and here we are. Who's got, who's got the top computers? Is the Department of Energy. All right. I wonder what they could come up with if they have not already. I got a feeling it's going to look like a balloon, a jacked up balloon. Anyway, here's a way to get at it. That's It'll be linked below. You've seen this before probably 10 million times if you follow me at all and this this shows how to enhance buoyancy so to speak there it is again and that's on this here's other topics this is linked below you don't have to be on twitter to look at these things they may be of interest uh this is my question to the world because they will they should and they will. And we'll, 
We'll leave him out of it for now. Right? De los ayuntamientos de la isla. Agree with me, right? Zapatero. ¿Qué opina usted del gobierno de Zapatero? Okay. Uh, we covered that. And oh, look at my other uh, my other YouTubes. If you're interested. And what is this? That's done. We're winding down here, folks. Winding it down. Wrap it up. Let's try some production values. Oh, boy. Not again. Please don't. Please don't.